Hi everyone, uh, I'm Ping Yung Chen. So um, after the nice uh, overview of nuclear related uh, analytics provided by uh, uh, Professor Alfred Hero, uh, I'm, I'm here to like, narrow down the scope to uh, uh, and then emphasize the techniques that we have been using, uh, graph mining techniques for detecting cyber in intrusions. Um, this is a joint work with, uh, with uh, Dr. Sutani Chakuri at the uh, Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. And also my uh, PhD thesis advisor Alfred Hero. Um, so we would like to provide some motivation that uh, there are recently there are reports showing uh, like cyber uh, threats are becoming more and more severe uh, in nuclear facilities. For example, the IA, IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, has reported the uh, cases of malware attacks happening at the nuclear plants. And very recently, um, Senator, Senator Sam Nunn and Senator Ted Turner uh, the quote from their nuclear threat initiative has uh, emphasized that the nu uh, cyber threats to nuclear materials and nuclear facilities, nuclear command control and communications are becoming more sophisticated every day. And the most important thing is the, the global technique capability to address the threat is still limited. Uh, so here is a, a demonstration of uh, actual propagation, like possible propagation paths to compromise uh, a, a nuclear a planet, a planet by um, like a techniques like a pri privilege escalation or malware propagation. So you can see a malware can be released remotely from internet and then try to propagate inside the nuclear plant to compromise the target. Um, so the purpose of our work is to um, use graph mining techniques by representing uh, pairwise interactions between entities or observations on a network as a graph. And you can think of these pairwise uh, interactions as like a transportation uh, routes or like the actual communication uh, patterns between nodes in the network that you care about. An idea of our work is to extract some structural features from this uh, graph observation uh, to do a graph connectivity summarization uh, and then to do uh, anomaly detection. Uh, and then the, the idea is that uh, based on this graph observation, we are able to transform the graph representation to a vector-based representation and that uh, enables a lot of techniques developed for a vector um, vector-based uh, learning methods like machine learning, signal processing, graph mining, and so on. And of course, the ultimate goal of these uh, graph mining techniques is to identify high vulnerability nodes uh, and then to do early detection of anomalies and attacks. Um, so I would like to summarize our contributions. So uh, we have several uh, graph mining techniques developed to extract structural features uh, from a graph. So, so for a single graph, we have a technique called the multi-centrality graph principle component analysis that extracts features from the graph. And if you have uh, multiple graph observations, then you, you are, we are interested in learning a joint vector representation of these observed graphs, and that will be the techniques uh, that we call the multi-centrality graph dictionary learning methods. And of course, we will show how these techniques can be applied to um, cyber intrusion detection. Okay, so, so how this is the, uh, here is how a graph structural feature extraction works. So the goal, again, is to, we have to start with a graph observation, and then we would like to extract some structural features from the, from the graph and represent uh, these features as n by p feature matrix X, where n is the number of nodes or number of entities uh, in the data, and then p is the number of structural features that you extracted uh, and then here we will discuss three types of graph structural features. The first type will be the graph walk statistics. So graph walk statistics, you can view it as like a local, uh, local view of each node, how, how, the structure, how the structural information of a local view of each node. Um, so the first thing we can extract is the number of uh, uh, H-hop walks, like how, what's the uh, number of uh, uh, one-hop or two-hop walks from a local node. And then we can store it, uh, and for each node, we can, we can uh, stack it as a column, uh, column and then have uh, this vector representation, A, H, A plus one. And you can see there's actually a recursive form when you want to compute the H plus one hub walks from H hub uh, um, information. That would be like a recursive form, A H plus one equals A times A H, and then A is just the adjacency matrix of the graph. And we, and we are also interested in the total weight of these h hub walks, the sum of the weights in these h hub walks from each node. And then you can see there's a very similar recursive form in terms of W. And then this W can be recursively computed uh, using the edge weight matrix uh, W and then also the agency matrix A. And that means that this uh, graph walk statistics can be computed very efficiently because of this uh, recursive relation. 
And then the second type of uh, graph features that we try to extract will be the centrality majors. So centrality major is actually a major of importance of a node in the graph. And then the importance can vary from different perspectives. For example, if you use degree as a centrality major, then you care about what's the number of connections uh, of a node to other nodes. Uh, if you use betweenness, then you are more interested in the, the shortest path uh, uh, of a node to other nodes. Uh, also, closeness will be something related to the hop distance to other nodes. And then eigenvector centrality is something um, like a Google page, page rank is a, uh, is a major of a relative importance of a node to its neighbors. Uh, and ego centrality is a local version of between the centrality. And we also, very recently, we proposed a new centrality major called the local feeder vector centrality major. And it's very uh, uh, related to uh, vulnerability analysis because it's a major of uh, how important a node is after this node is removed from the graph. So you can see. Uh, this uh, centrality is a major of the importance in terms of connectivity of a node. And uh, below, the below I, we, I show a very small graph, like a, about 20 nodes, a, a network, and then I highlighted uh, the node with the highest centrality major. So you can see even for a small network like this, uh, every centrality major has, pick, has picked uh, different uh, nodes as the, as the most important one. And that means that, uh, that, means that uh, even for a small network, like different centrality uh, majors has different views and different flavor. And then, that's what, and then so it motivates us to have uh, like a unified work to uh, sort of aggregate different views of these, these centrality majors and then to make use of these, these uh, different information or different views of the graph. Uh, and then the third type of uh, graph structural features will be the half distance to a set of reference nodes. So the idea is to select some anchor nodes in a graph and compute the distance uh, of other nodes to these anchor nodes as a structural feature. And that, uh, in intuitively, this should uh, enhance the, uh, the structural identifiability of graphs, especially a graph with high sym symmetry. And I show the example below where you have a network of five nodes and it's like a highly uh, symmetric structure. Uh, and if you only compute the degree uh, as information, then you can see that uh, basically node 1, 2, 4, 5, uh, they all have degree 2. And in the vector space representation, these nodes are in inseparable or unidentifiable. But if you, if you use node 1 as the reference node and then you compute the distance of other nodes to node 1, then we get an additional vector x reference here. And then if you use uh, these two vectors uh, as the vector representation of these nodes, you can see that uh, um, the structural identity has been enhanced in the sense that now only nodes five and four are unidentifiable, but node one and two, they are, they are being, they, their representation are, are differentiated because of the, uh, the half distance that, uh, to, the, to, the node, uh, to the node one is different. Okay, so here's our first uh, technique to uh, do a graph principle component analysis uh, from structural features. So the idea is that once we have uh, extracted the several structural features from the graph, then we, we, will, we would like to project uh, this feature matrix uh, onto a set of uncorrelated orthogonal bases that uh, sort of preserve and then preserve the maximal projected variance. And then the idea, general idea is to do a dimensional reduction uh, out of these extracted features. And there are two advantages also of doing this uh, type of uh, principal component analysis, the first one is decorrelation, uh, because the, usually these uh, extracted graph features, for example, centrality majors, they are highly correlated. So it's pretty important that we need to, to de decorrelate uh, these features and, uh, to avoid like, overwhelming problems. And the second thing is now, we, after we do PCA, we act actually effectively represent each node uh, from a, a high dimensional representation, a p-dimensional representation, uh, down to a q-dimensional representation, a much lower dimensional space. and then. That also allows us to do a, a better visualization of what's going on uh, in these uh, graph mining techniques. Uh, so here is the illustration of how a uh, graph PCA works. So the idea is that we want to make sure that our, our techniques, uh, the graph PCA techniques, is very sensitive to local changes happening in the graph. And this is based on the observation that a lot of cyber attacks, especially in large systems, uh, usually, this attack only occur very local change or local structural change. So it's pretty important that our techniques is able to capture these uh, local or tiny changes happening in the graph. Um, and then, so we are plotting basically four like structurally similar graphs, uh, and then we are we are using the two leading principal component uh, principal uh, principal components, and then we also computed the uh, the variance, the energy of each principal component. So you can see the first one is a very structured, uh, very, uh, it's a very structured and a highly symmetric graph. 
and the and then we are plotting the, the vector representation of each node, and then the, the nodes uh, that are labeled in the gray box they have the same vector representation. So you can see if you have a graph with a high symmetry, then a lot of, a lot of nodes have the same vector representation. But uh, if you look at the second plot, once you remove an edge from uh, node three four, then you can see um, now the, the node three node two and node three they, they don't have uh, the same vector representation anymore because the structures has changed. And also, if you double the weight uh, between node three and node four uh, here, you, you can see again now this uh, vector representation also changes. Uh, so that means that the PCA is doing a pretty good job in detecting these changes uh, that occur very locally. Uh, especially, and um, the last plot shows that if you allow this uh, graph to be directed, then you can see the the vector representation will change. But, and then, but the, the principle, the first principle component, basically preserve the direction of the graph. And the last uh, column just shows the principal uh, comp energy of the principal component. So you can see most of the energies are indeed captured by the first leading uh, principal components. OK, so now based on this uh, PCA, graph PCA techniques, we are able to define a, an aggregated uh, centrality major uh, that we call structural difference score. So the idea is that we have this uh, uh, Low dimensional vector representation matrix Y, that's N by Q matrix, where Q is the number of principal components that you are using uh, to represent the graph features. And, the, uh, and then we are proposing a structural difference score, SDS, that uh, for each node, SDS is just uh, uh, the, vector the difference of the vector representation and then squared, and then summing over all, all its uh, neighbors of node I. And then lastly, divided by the number of degrees. So it's like a the per edge uh, difference of a node to its neighboring nodes. Uh, so intuitively, this is very useful for anomaly detection because uh, if you imagine if you have a normal network, then most of the nodes should uh, behave similarly. So and then the SDS score should be low. And at some point, if there are some anomaly patterns happening in the graph, then S the SDS score will be high because some nodes are behaving very differently to comparing to its neighbors. Um, so now we can also extend this work to uh, uh, multiple graph observations. So now we, instead of one graph, we have a G graph, a set of graph observations. And then what we do to learn a joint vector re uh, representation is that for each graph, we run a pre pre uh, graph principle component analysis separately, and then we compute a structural difference score for each graph. And then we extract the, the top Z nodes with the highest uh, SDS score as the feature matrix for dictionary learning. And then we have this uh, uh, feature matrix uh, Z. And then we will do a sparse dictionary learning on, on this uh, matrix Z. So the idea is to learn the basis that represents uh, this uh, uh, feature matrix Z. And then we are also um, restricting the coefficients of this uh, sparse representation to be sparse. That means we want to learn a, ba a basis representation such that only a few bases um, can, be, can represent the observation. And, and this uh, sparse dictionary learning can be solved by the case BD approaches. OK, so lastly, how we, will, uh, we will show how we can apply these techniques to cyber intrusion detection. So this is a data set from University of New Brunswick. Uh, it's, it contains the seven days of attacks happening in a system. So each day is corresponding to one graph. And for each day, there, there is actually normal traffic going on in, in, the, in the system. And then uh, for four out of seven days, there are some attacks, different types of uh, cyber attacks happening in the system. That will be highlighted in the red box. Uh, and then we are trying to use, uh, so the observation we have is the interaction between nodes. In this case, this will be uh, the host or machines that, that have uh, the communication patterns between machines, and then, and then we are trying to do apply our graph mining techniques to see can we detect these uh, attacks happening uh, in four out of the seven days. Okay, so here is the, the result. Firstly, we are showing how uh, MCGPC works in practice. So uh, I, I'm plotting um, the average of the S structural difference score for each uh, uh, for each graph. And then I label it by different days in, in the x-axis. And then the red uh, bars corresponding to the days that uh, attacks happen. And then the blue bars are the days that attacks are absent. Uh, so you can see that the SDS is doing a pretty good job in the, in the sense that if you look at the days 3, 4, uh, four and 5, the SDS score is, are, are significantly higher than other days. That means that uh, there are some anomaly patterns going on in these days. And, but you, uh, and then if you look at the last day, the seventh day, um, the uh, attack is not uh, 
uh, distinguishable from the days of normal attack and uh, a normal activity. And the reason is that the, the, the last state of attack is actually a crypto attack. So it actually incurs no topological change in the, in the, in the system. So that's why uh, this, there is no significant structural change in, in, the, in, the, in the network. And the most interesting thing is that if you compare uh, the same, using the same technique and you only compute the degree the change of the degree of each graph, and then you, you compute the average, and then the variance of each degree is actually not evident to see the to see the attack patterns. That means that uh, it's pretty important to have a different view of uh, uh, of the graph by using our techniques to have a better understanding and improve the performance of anomaly detection in the system. Uh, lastly, I'm showing the performance of the graph dictionary techniques, where we want to learn basically two atoms out of this seven days uh, graph. So the, the, the left figure is the two atoms that we learned. And then the blue one is the normal activity atom, the basis, the normal basis. And then you can see there's actually one uh, node uh, that, has a higher, uh, that has higher value than others. That's because in this, uh, in this data set, only one node that would be the router that actually con con responsible for connecting most of the nodes. And then the red curve is actually has a higher variation. That would be referring to the attack activity atom. And then we are plotting the coefficients of each state on, on the right. And then you can see, based on this uh, sparse representation, and then if you do some clustering or classification on these uh, coefficients, you, you can see this, uh, the, attacks, the attacks can be, uh, can be detected uh, uh, in the backhead space representation. And then that's why we can successfully do a non detection of these uh, cyber systems. OK, so uh, I would like to conclude this talk by emphasizing that we have uh, uh, understand that there are a lot of uh, vulnerability or cyber attacks happening in nuclear facilities. And then we are really looking for tools to do early detection and better uh, identif identification of cyber attacks. And in this work, we have, uh, present, uh, we have proposed uh, a graph mining based techniques uh, to do, uh, to do um, a, um, graph mining uh, in, in for cyber security. That would be a, a graph principle component analysis and graph uh, dictionary learning. And especially, we propose a structural difference score that would be the uh, aggregated the centrality major of a network to, and then it's, it's showing to be very effective in detecting anomaly patterns in the graph. Uh, and lastly, we have demonstrated our work on the cyber intrusion database. Um, so we would like to thank the support uh, from CBT and also um, from PNL, and then this below our contact information, and I'm happy to take questions. I also have a response is proportional to the energy deposited by the neutron or photon. Uh, there's good intrins intrinsic efficiency, and we can discriminate uh, based on pulse shape uh, whether we have a neutron or a photon.